everyone, Brad here. Welcome to Airstream of Utah. And on this Maintenance Monday, I'm going to discuss with you winterizing a travel trailer. Join me. Before we get started, make sure that you always consult your owner's manual for proper procedures on your rig. They all vary somewhat, so make sure you consult your owner's manual, which will give you a step by step instructions to how to do this. This video is just to give you a generic overview of winterizing a standard travel trailer. If you are uncomfortable with this process or don't want to do it yourself, feel free to bring it into our service department. We'd love to help you out and do it for you, making life easy. Our trained technicians can do this for you very quickly. Here are the basic steps of winterizing a standard travel trailer. One is get your rig as level as possible. Utilize the same methods you would use for for leveling your rig whenever you go camping. Once you're done with that, drain your tanks in an approved drain spot. Or if you have already done that on your last trip, that's fine. So make sure all of your tanks are drained. Freshwater tank, black and gray tanks are all drained completely and flushed out. Then you want to turn on your water pump. There will be some residual water left in your freshwater tank. And depending on the angle of the rig, it may pick up more or less, but turn on your water pump. Once you've turned your water pump on, then you can use your shower, which is typically pretty close by, and you can go ahead and drain that water, the rest of the remaining water, out of your water tank into the shower tub. And in doing so, you're also going to be draining out your shower hose. Once your water tank is empty and, and the water pump is no longer pumping any water out, turn it off. No prolonged use of water pump without water installed can damage the pump. So please make sure you're paying attention and turn it off as soon as all the water stops. Then you want to make sure you have flushed your toilet. So you push your toilet pedal valve down. So dump any remaining water in there out. Then your exterior shower and your interior shower, the hose and the shower head themselves should be removed and drained of water completely. So once you've turned your water pump off, the next step would be to go Open up your low point drains. They're either typically on the bottom of your tank with two red handles. Some larger models, the handles for the low point drains are inside. Again, consult your owner's manual to find your low point drains. Let that water drain out of those low point drains. That'll be the water system and leave every other spigot inside your rig open. Then you need to disconnect the water pump outlet side. So how do you know which one's in or outlet? You have a strainer, so the clear plastic looks like a big plastic bottle cap and has a mesh screen inside. That's your strainer. That side of the water pump is your inlet side. The other side is your outlet side. So disconnect the outlet side. Turn your water pump on again, but have a towel ready because some water is going to spew out of there. It should just be very little, a cup or less. Uh, that will pour into your towel. Take your towel out and let the towel dry. And then reconnect your water pump. Then go outside and connect up a air compressor to your city water inlet. You blow air into your city water inlet, no more than 50, 50 PSI, and you let air flow through the entire water system. One thing that's recommended is to go around and open one valve at a time. So I open the sink here, hot, then I open the sink cold. Then I go to the shower, hot, cold. Bathroom, sink, hot, cold. Toilet, plunge outside hot and cold system low point drains open both of those individually outside shower hot and cold both open those both individually and by then you should have blown all the water out of your whole system again 50 psi and make sure that you don't let air pressure build up inside the system uh, with all of your valves closed you should always have at least one valve open when you have air coming in once you have blown the system out with your air compressor then it's time to take your front jack so make sure your stabilizers are all up Take your front jack and lower the rig as much as possible. Raise the rig up as much as possible to let any remaining water move around and hopefully drain out. The next thing to do would get you some non-toxic antifreeze such as this. There are many brands out there. You just need to verify that the temperature that this is good to is good for the area that you live in. Some go to 50, minus 50. Some go to minus 100. So it really depends on the area, the area of the world you live in. You take this antifreeze and you pour it into your sink drain. So the P-trap, the little U-shaped drain valve underneath your sinks that's for your p-trap so make sure you pour enough in there so it fills that up both in your shower and your bathroom sink and your kitchen sink make sure that the p-trap is full 
you can also take some of this and put it in your gray tank and your black tank so the, the knife valve, the blade valve, doesn't freeze up as well. The last step to storing your rig out in the elements in the cold weather temperatures is to remove your batteries, put them into a cool, dry place. Some people store their rigs in a temperature controlled environment, so it's not that big a deal, but uh, it's recommended to keep them out of the freezing temperatures. One other option you have for winterizing your rig is to use the non-toxic antifreeze to winterize the entire rig. Some people choose one or the other, but Airstream says both are fine. Some considerations for which one to choose, air or antifreeze. If you're temporarily driving through some cold temperatures and you don't want your water system to freeze, air is pretty simple and pretty easy to do and pretty fast. If you're storing your rig long term over the winter time in this very, very cold temperatures, antifreeze might be the way to go. If you have a relatively new model, 2020 or newer, and some of the older models have these built in, it's a antifreeze kit. And the new Airstreams all come with them. So first of all, you need to find your water pump. And it's typically either right below the fridge or right under this tall closet here. Again, consult your owner's manual to find out where your water pump is. There's a water system diagram in every manual. In this particular model, it is underneath the refrigerator here and it's behind this little wall. And I'm looking for a winterization hose that looks like this. On this winterization hose is a tag, and that tag tells me that normal use looks this way, winterizing use looks this way. And all that is is showing you a diagram of the valve that you can turn. On the very end of this hose, it's right on the inlet side of your water pump, is a 90 degree shutoff valve. So it's either in line with the normal water line or it's in line with this, enabling you to winterize. What I would do is take this bottle of antifreeze, take this tube, turn my valve back there, put this end of this hose into the bottom of this jug here. Once this is inserted and I have the valve turned, then I turn my water pump on. Then I go to my sink and I turn the hot water spigot on until pink comes out. Then I turn the cold spigot on until pink comes out. Then I do the same for my toilet. Then I do the same for my shower, hot and cold. Then I do the same for my sink, hot and cold in the bathroom. Then I do the same for my outside shower, hot and cold. Then I do the same for both of my low point drains on the bottom. And once pink comes out of all those, then I know that my water system is completely full of RV safe, non-toxic antifreeze, and none of my water systems are gonna freeze. And to clean that out, it's very simple. You fill up your fresh water tank and run all those same spigots until nothing but clear water comes out and you're ready to go again. It's a very simple process. If you happen to have an older model that doesn't have this kit built into it, you can easily do this yourself. You can build a piece of this hose from parts you can buy at Lowe's. Uh, you can go, Camco makes a specific RV winterization kit. It looks just like this clear hose. It comes with a three-way valve that you would put onto your water pump. Either way is very simple to do. Once again, before you embark on any of these processes, please consult your owner's manual or give us a call. We'd love to help you out. If you have any questions or concerns, please give us a call, send us a text message or email, or better yet, stop by. We'd love to meet you. Have a great day, everyone. Happy adventures.